you know, over the last 10 days since Her Majesty died, we've all been coming to terms with the fact that her reign had come to an end and that 96-year life was over. But when um, in the Abbey her coffin was brought in, carried by those fantastic pallbearers from the Queen's Company Grenadier Guards, and it passed almost under one's nose, one thought, actually, this is for real. Um, she has gone. Um, and this service is all about um, commemorating uh, and saluting all that she has done and wishing her well um, on her journey to eternity in the future. It was it was a real privilege to be there. Um, and then, of course, you know, the military did its wonderful thing outside. But um, I think all in all, it's been a very sad day, a somber day, but a day of, frankly, only the United Kingdom Great Britain could have done as well as it did. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. We we use a word like pageantry, which in some ways is rather sort of patronising to what the uh, armed forces do on an occasion like this. I mean, it was an incredible spectacle that passed off without a hitch and stirred the emotions. I mean, you must have been immensely proud and you must have thought back to the time when you were chief of the general staff and also senior in the military that you must have been involved in the preparations 10, 15 years ago to see this happen, a mixture of great sadness at the passing of our Queen, but immense pride that we can put yeah. on something like this. No, I, I mean, Ed, you're absolutely right. I mean, the planning of this has gone on for years and years. The plans have been refined many, many times as circumstances have changed. But then, of course, Tuesday last week, when we heard the news that Her Majesty had died, that was the moment that the planning stopped and the execution of those plans started. And the fact that it's gone so well today, but also gone so well um, up in Scotland previously, and through the lying in state, all these things were properly planned. And then as soon as the gun was fired, if you like, when we heard that Her Majesty had died, then the planning stopped, the execution, the putting into place, the operations began. And what we saw so fantastically today in particular was just the fulfillment of all that planning. Um, rehearsals, yes, they've gone on um, day and night over the last week, 10 days or so. And of course, that is the military. Um, we want to get it absolutely right. Um, everybody in this country, or a large number of people in this country, most people in this country, loved Her Majesty. But it, all of us in the armed forces swore an oath of allegiance to her. So we absolutely wanted to get it right for our Commander-in-Chief, um, our beloved Queen. And all those servicemen who were on parade today, a small fraction of the overall complement of the British Armed Forces, they wanted to get it right to honour the late Queen on behalf of all those who are serving now and have served. And um, I, I think we can probably all agree that it actually has gone pretty well. I mean, I'd love you to reflect, having served for so long in the military, and I don't want this to sound trite, but I... Every single soldier, sailor and airman involved will have been, I mean, it'll be one of the biggest moments in their life, whatever happens after after this. Well, I mean, I, mean, I think you're absolutely right. Um, and actually, I would just focus in on the eight yes. hall bearers exactly. from the Queen's Company, First Battalion Grenadier Guards. Um, if anyone's carried a coffin for a loved one or a family member, you'll know it's actually a very difficult job. But for a state funeral with a lead-lined coffin in the glare of world television, it's a huge responsibility. And, and those young guardsmen, um, many of them, most of them, were in the Middle East deployed in, in Iraq on security duties two weeks ago and were brought back because they were the right, the right men to do it. Um, and it's the traditional function of the Queen's Company uh, of the Grenadier Guards to carry out that function. And they did it brilliantly. And if you just think the number of times they had to pick up that coffin under the glare of world television, move it um, in and out of vehicles, um, on and off catafalques, uh, and, and so it goes on. Um, I think those young men really deserve every salute that, that can be given to them. It's jolly physically demanding. And I think they did fantastically well. I, I, really, I really salute them, actually. It was, it was pretty extraordinary. I, I went to the um, lying in state uh, last night and looked at the guardsmen 
guarding the coffin. And um, as I left, a fellow peer of ours texted to say, you just walked past my son who was guarding uh, the coffin at that particular point. I mean, is it extraordinary that the thousands of um, members of the armed services who, who will have taken part in this, uh, the kind of memory that will be seared in their minds now? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, Ed, Ed, you're right. When I was there on Friday, um, I I stood and I watched for a little while, and I saw a Royal Marine veteran uh, wearing his blazer, his medals, his green beret on top of his head. And I saw him walk down the steps, and I wondered, what was he going to do when he got to the catafalque? Well, when he got there, he stopped, he turned towards it, he dropped onto one knee, he paused, he crossed himself, he got up again and drew himself to his full height and saluted, and then he walked on. I thought, mm. wow, that's mm. fantastic. But you know, when he walked on, of course, that's what we all have to do. We've all now got to walk on, and we're walking into the reign of King Charles III. And I, 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 we loved our Queen. She was fantastic for 70 years, but she can't go on forever. She couldn't go on forever. And now we have a new monarch. And we have to transfer our affection, our loyalty, look to his leadership, um, you know, obviously with the elected government of the day, to take this country forward. Um, I, I was really struck by that Royal Marine veteran, what he did, and he walked on. Richard, thank you so much for uh, coming on. I could go on forever. And... Um... <laughs>